Andrew McCart, IFL TV, in association with MTK Global. You know, as always, I'm delighted to be joined by Sean, Seanie Mac, Bang Bang Gravy Chip McComb himself. Sean, a couple of days, a few days after your fight, um, you're back home in Belfast with your lovely family, your young family now. Um, first and foremost, how are you? How's things? I'm all good, yeah. Um, the thoughts are settled. Um, just enjoying some family time. Uh, Obviously, the, my baby's only six weeks old now as well, so we missed a lot of time due to being in camp with him being born and stuff. So just enjoying that, to be honest. Uh, I know uh, you, you sent out a tweet saying, or uh, on Instagram as well, saying that when you were getting hit by Gavin Gwynn, that it wasn't just you in that ring anymore. You were thinking about the family back home, the little boy that you've got back home and stuff like that. Was that a major decision in you sort of like saying no more sort of thing in that fight against Gavin? No, see, like, I've had a few days to think about it. Like, I can't explain how I felt. I'll never I'll see the best way to describe it. It was it was a Ronnie O'Sullivan, that, like, it was a moment of Ronnie O'Sullivan madness. Like, it was a Ronnie O'Sullivan thing. Like, just, just fuck this. Mm -hmm. Like one of the seven, one to get hit at one four seven and just fuck this. Because mm -hmm. at that stage, even when I watched it back, the fight it was level. You could give it level three rounds apiece. Like I wasn't getting beat up. Do you know what I mean? Um, hats off to Gavin Gwynn. He was he came out with a serious game plan. He was there. He was tough as old boots, and he came and he came to win and he won. But I, he wasn't beating me up. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like I was getting paid up and I was well out of my depth. It was just a moment of madness where I just thought, fuck this, I can't be annoyed. And I don't know where I came from. It's just that madness. It's just in some people. And we've seen it with some people over the years, like Michael Gomez done it against Peter McDonough at one stage. Um, we've seen the likes of Mayorga, Johnny Tapia, all these like people. And I, like now I probably understand why them type of people do what they do. It was just it was just one switch in my head. I just was fuck this, and I was thinking about my baby and my channel, but it was just like I was smart enough to know that it wasn't that I wasn't on the game that night, and I just thought fuck it, I'll come again, take them gloves off, get them off me. I just I'm not happy with myself. I'm not happy with my performance. No matter if I'm winning or drawing or losing, I'm not happy. Just take them off. And and that's what happened, and it's just it's okay. Like it's it's not the, it's not the end of the world. People are, are questioning my heart and questioning all this stuff, and they're like, fair enough. It's it's understandable as boxing fans if they want to do that, do that. Um, so what do you say to people that say you quit? Because I know there was that that the, the thing on Twitter has always been that thing with O'Hara Davis and stuff like that. So what do you say to people that? You quit. You, you said it was a moment of madness, but again, it's you never had the best preparation in terms of Danny Vaughan, and, and he was out in Dubai. You started a new business, a new baby. I mean, everything was just up in the air for this whole camp. So there is factors into play here, isn't there? Well, there's factors in play, but they're not excuses. Do you know what I mean? Like the, these, like maybe not to that extreme with Gavin Gwynn. I was going to say he he dealt with the same. The same situations he didn't because he didn't have a newborn baby and he didn't open a new business and he didn't he wasn't traveling halfway around the world um through a camp i don't put them down as excuses because at the end of the day that was on me to go and do them things and um i felt good in camp felt burnt and it was long very very long and it was there was times there where i felt just depressed of like the same old setbacks, the same old shit just going on and the camp, the fate being delayed and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, like for people saying I quit and all, like it's like I'm, I'm glad their eyes work because they did quit. When you watch the half fate and you see I turn my back, I, I, I decided like get them gloves off me. And that like I was, I was unhappy with my performance, I was unhappy with I just. Like I say, it was a moment of madness, and it was it wasn't because it was hurt or it was like tired. It was I, honestly from the bottom of my heart, it wasn't any of those. It was just like fuck this. This is doing my head, in. 
And that's the best way to describe it. That was a Ronnie O'Sullivan moment. It was just like, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you regret it now looking back on it since the dust has settled? Has it been a few days since the fight? Do you, do you have any regret just turning your back? Because again, as a, as a fan, like I, I know you, Sean, I'm good friends with you. And like and when I was watching the fight, I was like, oh God, this is another good Sean McComb fight. This is another fight where Sean's going to bite down on the gum shield and go for it. Do you, I mean, do you have any regrets in that? Because it was a, it was an entertaining fight for them for the however yeah, long it was. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a brilliant fight, a really really good fight. I watched the back, and it was like it was a cla a classic. I actually messaged Gavin Gwynn privately, and I apologized for throwing the toys out of the pram and and and, and turning my back and giving up, um, because it was such a good fight for the fans, and I apologized that. To Gavin for for turning back and 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 making the fight stop early because it could have been a it could have been a fight of the year contender had had it gone the twelve rounds, um. So, but like, uh, it's just one of them. I don't know. It's do you regret just, it, Sean? Do you regret I, it? I do. Yes, of course yeah. I do. Yeah, because uh, 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 it's a split second decision. Mm. It's a split second decision. Like the referee waved it off as soon as turned it back. And at that stage, I was like, I don't care. Just get them gloves off me. I'm not happy with my performance here. I'm not happy with what way I'm performing. I'm just couldn't be annoyed. Just take them off. But had the referee had maybe stopped and went, now the referee done his job, done not a job. He, he was ready to do so. But sometimes when a fighter is given a couple of seconds extra, they actually get that. There's a switch in their head that may make them go right at the again. Like you see, like fighters who would be happy to be waved off at a certain stage, mm -hmm. but if they're given, and like, let's say for example, a fighter gets knocked down and he gets up, but he's unsteady, but the referee's happy to let him go on, mm -hmm. and he gets knocked down again and he gets stopped, and 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 it doesn't carry on. Had the referee have made that decision the first time, the boxer's not going to question it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But he's going to say, yes, I'll fight on, no problem, if he's given the decision to do so. The same if, if the referee had stopped me and turned me around and there had been four or five seconds passed, he's like, what are you doing? Are you, are you fighting or what? Here, I don't know. There's a possibility I just went, yeah, let's do it. Fuck it. Yeah. And then just went on the back and started moving more and moving more. And I could have done that. I didn't, then it's just the way it happened that it happened. I do regret it because when I watched it back, it was such a good fit. So I regret that and I'll deal with it. I do deal with it like a, like a normal person. I'm okay. I'm like madly, physically, I'm okay. I don't mind. Like it's, it's just a fucking, it's just another, it, it, it's not, it's maybe not fair on the fans, but at the end of the day, no one's going to get in that ring for me and do what I have to do. And until I'm fully happy doing what I'm doing in that ring, then, uh, uh, like, it is what it is. It's, it's, not a dangerous, it's a dangerous sport, Sean. So, again, like, Gavin was relentless in that fight, and I, it seems like you, could, you couldn't get him off him. I just want to go back to what you said when you said uh, you weren't happy with your performance. This was your first fight down at 135, and I said to you, like, just around the hotel, that I didn't think you could make 135, and you've done it easily. But do you feel like yeah. because of the, the, that extra f five pounds that you lost, because it was... Well, you, I think you, you never fought at 140 championship weight before, did you? I think you were always 140. Yeah, I did once. once, I did so, once. so, again, the five pounds, that's quite a lot of weight to lose. You, did that have any effect in your, your punching power, the snap in your, uh, your punches, your legs, or anything like that, do you feel? No, honestly, I, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I didn't. Mm. I didn't at all. I didn't feel my legs were not one bit tired. My arms were not one bit tired. Gavin Gwynn was just one tough bastard. And I was hitting him with good, clean shots. And he took them well and just kept playing forward. And and he said it was part of his game plan. Like, he cut me early. And he was happy, Rick. It was a head clash. Um, he cut me again in the second round when he was even happy. That gives him momentum. He told it. He told he he, he done his post for interview. And, and he says that gave him momentum, seeing the blood. And he was playing. And, and encouraged him on more. To put more pressure on and more pressure on. And, and he got it worked. It worked on his favor. Um, I was just I don't know. I was starting trading for too long and, and mixing for too long and holding my feet for too long. And 
and that just may be down to lack of maybe lack of sparring, which it didn't really have mm-hmm. because of COVID restrictions and whatnot. Um, also a lack of like uh, the game. It was part of the game plan. We didn't want to be moving like relentlessly around the ring for no reason, but I could have done that, and I wouldn't have got hit. Mm-hmm. But then if I would have been born, and we would have, <laughs> would have been shit. So no, it was an entertaining fight. I, I, you I, can't I, keep everyone happy. No, you can't, mate. You can't, especially in in in, in boxing and stuff like that, because you do. You're going to have your critics correct, no matter what you do do in life, and especially in boxing. But this isn't the end for you. This you're going to come back stronger than this. You're going to continue at one three five lightweight. We'll see where opportunities come. Um, I want to continue on. I'll be happy to go to 140 again. I'll be happy to, I'll be happy at any, like, I'll, I'll be happy to go either way. But like I say, Andrew, honestly, I do mean that when I was down at 135, I was, I felt good. I was, I wasn't tired. I wasn't, I was more madly, madly drained due to the long camp than I was physically drained due to the weight loss. And I believe that I felt very good at one three five in terms of um strength and tiredness and fatigue. Like I honestly it was okay. I was good. Like the pace of that fight was like unbelievable pace. I mean, and I have seen the same thing with Josh Kelly as well. Like the next night, it was a very similar fight. Mm. Even the cut on the back of the head was very yeah. similar. It was just like it was this like it was like a replay of my fight all over again at a different weight class and and the like, same thing again like it's like the circumstances were different obviously Josh didn't turn his back and 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 do what I done but I, I I'm I'm hundred like, I'm I'm almost a hundred percent sure Josh Kelly will probably come back and win a world title or good enough to come back and do so and that will make him a hundred times better fighter and I'm just sitting watching going. Like, I have no, I have nothing to even criticize Josh Kelly for based on that performance because he was brilliant, he was phenomenal. But it's just, it's just experience now and learning how to deal with that type of fight in the future. And then I, he will do exactly that, watching that back. It's that old cliche, Sean, isn't it? That it's, it's not a loss, it's a lesson. Do you know what I mean? You That's learn exactly from, it. You, you learn from you that. Know? Like, you're going to learn from this the Gavin Gwynn fight and be like, well, Gavin Gwynn, he's already fought for the British title. He's fought for the Commonwealth title. Do you know what I mean? He's been in with Tennyson. He's been in with guys like Joe Cordina. He's been in with these guys that you haven't had the calibre of fighting yet. Although yeah. he may have lost against these guys, but he's been in there. And this is his third chance at this Commonwealth title at, at championship level. Do you know what I mean? This was your first yeah. real shot at it. So, again, it's going to be experience for you going into your next title fight. 100%. No, big experience. Big, big. There's a lot to gain there. Mm-hmm. loads again there and it's not really about what I win now it's about where I were like what I win where my where my career finishes and ends and what I pick up to end my career with so it's that I end gold is the main priority here mm-hmm. well that's the thing people said O'Hara quit when he fought Josh Taylor but now look at him he's the golden contract winner I mean he's had big fights won big titles and good money do you know what I mean so even although yeah. he turned his back against Josh, it's not it's not the end. Do you know what I mean? People it's it's the twenty four hour news cycle. <laughs> I, I was I was guilty of, of giving giving him stick for quitting. Um so I do know like he he, he he's winning now, like because mm. he like you say he's going contract champion, he, he's learned a lot from it. Um and he, but the difference is like Josh, Josh Taylor was obviously beating him up. I wasn't getting beat up. Like I was level, probably level in points, three rounds apiece after six and the seven. So different, but it's like it's the exact same, only different. The exact same, only different. Yeah, but see, see what's see what's intriguing. Like for me, when I was watching the fight, is you like five or six seconds before you turned your back, you sort of planted your feet and just went bang, bang, bang and laying about four body shots and you went for it. And I was like, there, he's got, he's got the, he's biting down his gum shield, he's going for it. Then when you turned your back, I was like, whoa. So it was that shock. I was like, you, you, from that split second of biting down your gum shield, standing your ground, planting your feet and then laying in them body shots and then turning your back, I was like, oh shit, something's happened. I didn't know what happened. Do you yeah. know what I mean? 
But I feel like I felt like you were in the you were in the fight still, and you were still going for it because, like I well, said, I was still on West, still on the fighting, still definitely in the fighting. And as I say, I wasn't hurt or wasn't tired or wasn't. I was, I was frustrated. I, I was I was frustrated. Mm-hmm. I was pissed off. Even when I was getting good shots off, I was still pissed off. Mm-hmm. I was just like, what am I doing? Why am I holding my feet? Why am I constantly just doing the same thing over and over and over again? Mm-hmm. And and each round I went out to change it up, I couldn't do it. I just it was just happy and straight back into that same rut of same like come back, throwing that left out overcut and throwing the hook and just stand in holding and just I was just as every time I went out to start a new round, I was thinking, right, I'll change it here. I'll mm-hmm. change it, I'll change it. And I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't get myself up to do it. Mm-hmm. So what's next for you then, Sean? What, what are you hoping for? I know, like you said, you've got a young, a wee boy there that you're probably only, he's six weeks old. You've probably seen him about three days of that six, six weeks. Oh, you know? I don't even know who I am. <laughs> he looks like you though, so there you go. Uh, I've seen the picture. He's, he's definitely, definitely yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what's next for you, mate? I don't know. Um, like I say, I'll spend some good family time. Um, some good time with the family. Um, I'll I'll get my new gym opened. Hopefully now with a bit more of a a bit more sight, mm-hmm. a bit more of a vision now on what's happened with COVID restrictions and stuff after the gay lanes have just been released of what's happening and work on getting the gym open again. Um, and then. I, I, I've, I would like to get back out again soon. Like I want to get back out again. I want to put things right, and I want to crack on with my career. And and I want to put that behind me. Mm-hmm. And again, like it, it's it's a bump in the road. It's a it's a big one to take. And it's, but anyone anyone who's ever watched me box knows that I have a lot more to give to the sport. Like and. People like I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to say, oh, I like it's always going to be brought up that I've no heart, I've no balls, I turn my back and I quit. I don't care about that. Like, because anyone who's ever, like, anyone who wants to, anyone who's ever seen me spar or seen me in the gym knows that's not true. And the people who do know it are the only ones that I need to. Do you know what? I'm going to say it. See, people who, think I have no heart, it's going to be better for me because my opponents, my future opponents are going to think I have no heart and they're going to come and come and come and my game plan is going to be I'm going to box a fucking head of you and I'm going to make sure I don't get hit mm-hmm. and I'm going to move my feet and I'm going to get lazy and I'm going to just use that as a way to box the head of people and not get hit and Sugar Ray Leonard is coming out of Sugar Sean McComb <laughs> there we go that's a perfect way to end this Sean uh, Sean go spend some time with your lovely family mate again thanks for this for YFL TV and myself man always a pleasure to speak to you my man and uh, like I say look forward to the next one stay safe brother that man speak soon lad cheers